Blender 3.5, let's go. All right, so this is a ring. The person asked if you can do this in Blender because obviously these people are using Matrix or Design, very famous jewelry softwares, and some don't believe that it's very easily done in Blender, which is all the point of my tutorials and my channel because yes, very amazing 3D jewelry design in Blender. So this is the design. First, let me create the ring. So first the ring size, add mesh circle. Now let's make a size nine American. So it's 19 divided by two, and let's put 120 vertices for this mesh circle. Location 000, centered right here. Okay, so this is size nine reference. All right, save and be happy. Now let's go to file, append, go and bring your favorite diamond object. You can find it in my gemstone collection on Blender Market, obviously. The gemstone size, let's have a look at, we see a 0.7. In real life, this would be 0.7 millimeters. It's way too small. Let's go to 1.5, 1.5. Don't forget to copy paste the Z scale right there. So it means that the mouth must be much bigger. Okay, so it's going to be a huge ring. Much of my clients don't care about ergonomy. They care about massive, impressive jewels. Okay, so one of the advantages of this design is that it's asymmetrical. That makes this design a lot easier. Okay, so now that we have a proper size, copy this, shift D, and I'm going to pan the material at once. So color gemstone material. You can also find this one on the blender market. It's going to be the ruby. Okay, so let's bring the ruby material and let's assign at once the material. This one is going to be a ruby. Okay, and let's go at viewport display color and let's make it a pinkish ruby. Let me append one of my new diamond, new generation. Okay, and this one will be the diamond. Oh, so this is for the gemstones. I'm going to use these gemstones for this ring. So now let's create the ring first. So let's center the 3D cursor, shift selected. Now make a mesh and plane. The orientation of the plane doesn't matter at all because we're going to keep only one vertex, delete these vertices. Okay, now we're going to start up here. Okay, from here, we're going to extrude around the finger in a very roughly manner first. Don't worry about precision a bit later. First, let's do this very quickly. Good, good. X3. All right, we're here. Now, side view. Okay, let's move this a bit to the side here. Great. Now, here, let me turn on some modifiers. Mirror. Let's reset all transformations on the x-axis also. Here, we're going to merge at point 0.1. We'll check that later. Let's extrude these. And very important, let's scale based on the 3D cursor like this. Let's move here and let's repeat this process a couple of times. So let's extrude, scale, and let's move this so this is a very big shell ring. That's a pretty typical shape. Here now we can do B, S, X, zero. All right, now let's go back at the median point reference for the operations. This is bigger at the top, okay? So obviously it's going to be much bigger. So let's, let's follow roughly the reference image and let's make the ring very, very big like this. Okay, so let's start adapting the design by moving the vertices where they belong. So then also don't forget to check on the front view to adapt the thickness. I like this shape because it's progressively getting smaller. So that's a very classical shape. So obviously we can follow the reference image, but also don't forget to train your jewelry history and jewelry design history also, the knowledge of the shapes. So now before we go any further, let's add some solidified modifier. Thickness 2, offset minus 1, that is correct. And also add a modifier subdivision surface level we Let's keep adapting the design. Now let's go to the reference size. Let's make a copy of it. Let's go to edit mode, move it to the side, close it, extrude it to the other side, somewhere like this. A, up and outside the normals, exit edit mode. So you have a reference. This helps a lot to properly complete the shape, especially from the front view. At this point, you should already have fun and curiosity. Okay, here we're going to take these vertices with control. Now let's go to shear and we're going to give it inclination somewhere here and then move them. We don't have to operate all the vertices one by one by hand. Also, don't forget to look on the inside. You can very quickly spot if a zone is sinking by watching the design from many different angles. That's why I'm always rotating the view, and so should you. Okay, so we, we don't want any edge shape right here. We want a nice dome. We don't need much geometry to create a very complex geometry in Blender. That's what I enjoy. A nice, even topology. That's always an advantage in any type of design. Instead of having a cortical nonsense topology. So you should practice an orderly topology to make things better. So obviously the more you progress, the more precision you need to have. Because as you can see, sometimes like for just a hair of difference in the position of the vertex, and that becomes a huge difference in the final shape of the ring. So for now, this seems pretty good. Let's go to Boolean difference fast from the ring side reference here. Let's hide it. Now we can see the progression on the inside and we can spot also some difference in the thickness means that we are too low. The distances must be 
very even, finalize the shape of the ring because once you begin the pave, we're going to have hundreds and hundreds of gemstones. That's very normal in the jewelry field. Finalize the shape of the ring because once you start the pave, you can kiss your pave. And if the shape of the ring wasn't the one that you wanted or needed, you will be all this big pill. Ring size nine. So the shape of the ring is done. That was obviously the very easy part of this entire design. Save and be happy and get ready for the next step. Um, now let's bring back the reference image. Let's move it higher. Let's give it a slight transparency. Now we're going to start making the lips of you add mesh plane. Move it on top of the reference image somewhere here. Now control A, all transforms, go already and set the mirror modifier on the X axis. There's a symmetry from right to left. Okay, so let's keep only one vertex and let's start extruding. Let's follow and adapt the outer shape rapidly because given that we're going to have a bending deformation, we'll have to readapt the real scale. Exit edit mode. Shift S cursor to select it. Go back to edit mode. Set the 3D cursor as reference. Extrude and scale. So obviously we won't get the correct shape at once. Here important on the Z axis, stay at one so everything stays flat. All right, so here let's adapt now by hand. Let's go back to the median point and let's adapt this inner edge based on the reference image. Don't be too proud of your precision. Now it's not the time. Just follow the general shape here and there. Let's go at zero on the global so it will properly close. Okay, so the emotion is starting to rise because the general shape is starting to show. So these are the lips. We pull them like that at once. Let's make a solidify modifier. Let's go at offset 1, thickness 1.5. Okay, it's upside down. Let's go to flip the normals because the offset is positive. So it must go up. That's the positive axis. Okay, we have this. Let's add a bevel and let's add some subdivision surface. Level 3. Okay, this is pretty nice. But now, let's go to end mode and let's start adapting the mouth comes closer to the bottom of the ring. Okay, now here we need to bend. So let's go to simple deform, bend. Okay, now let's add mesh cube, cube defo, deformation rep. Okay, so now the origin is the defo cube right there. Now the axis will be generally Z. Okay, and we need to find the proper amount. Okay, so we have a couple of things to solve. So that now depends on the position of the cube. So let's adapt the position of the cube to adapt the size that the mesh is taking with the deformation like this. But now we need a, a second simple deformation band based. All right, you know what? Let's take the cube. Yes, let's take the cube, but let's make a copy of that cube. Don't forget to properly orient your deformation cube. Okay, so now second deformation is going to take the second cube. All right, so we're going to bend on the X axis, but we need to find a proper position for our cube, okay? Let's go to top view. Let's hide this for a second. Okay, now here we have the deformations, but now the design of the mouth, the shape of the mouth is not cool, not nice looking at all. So let's bring back the reference image. Let's go to our mesh and here we need to adapt. And now the precision of the design is what matters. Okay, so let's readapt the shape. Obviously, then you'll have to play again with the deformations because the deformation depends on the size of the design, all right? Right, and now don't forget that if you can't get rid of these corners, you need more topology, okay? It's as simple as that. Because the subdivision surface depends on the distances between the few vertices that you're using. And if you don't have enough, you get a straight line, okay? So don't forget to readapt the topology from time to time to get those smooth shapes like this. So do it with the reference image and then do it on your own. Like I said here, we'll have to slightly readapt the deformations because we're changing the size of the design. You can also work on the vertices to readapt the deformation of the mesh like this and make things a lot easier. But as for the body of the ring, now it's time for precision. If you look at the design, you can see that the lips have a slight dome shape. So this requires us to work on the Z-axis. Let's make a loop cut right here in the middle and let's do this. But because we're going to make a pavé, let's adapt the loop cuts. And that's why having a clean topology is super important. All right, now let's adapt so the mouth starts smoothing. Okay, so here we adapt the Z position of our vertices. And where it doesn't smooth, you need to lower. All right, so now the general shape of the mouth is completed. We still have to read up slightly the deformations. Don't forget here, close it properly on the ring. Now here, we can work on the width of the ring, S, Y. Now adjust it to the mouth here. All right, great. So now we're going to model the tongue. We're going to follow a pretty similar process, except that we won't have the same deformations. All right, so let's add mesh 
play. Let's move it on top of the reference image and let's add a mirror on the X axis. So let's do a control A location and let's go to edit. As always, let's keep just this vertex. So here, let's start extruding and you can see that we have two levels. This level here in the middle of the tongue is bigger, higher. And remember, keep quads at all time. It's really easy to, to keep quads in this design so what you can do is extrude 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 but obviously we adapt the topology of the edge if necessary we move or add vertices so you have always even numbers of vertices to keep making quad fire love squads okay so first before i continue let me just mention a couple of things the entire design has small edges that's pretty common when you have a pavé and it looks pretty nice so obviously we are going to make these edges but that comes after and now what we're going to do take your tongue out save be happy we're going to start working on the fact that the tongue is not flat so what we're going to okay so here let's take this vertex and turn on proportional editing or maybe this vertex or that vertex let's move on the z axis and obviously let's take more people with us like this but it can't be lower than the finger size reference okay so you adapt that right now and then you readapt all the rest on the shape of the tongue Let's have a go at the solidify modifier. Offset 1, thickness 1.5. Okay, this is a mess because we need an A of N. We calculate outside for the normals. All right, subdivision level ream. Remember, if you put a bevel before the subdivision surface right there, you get sharper edges. All right, so this is the first level. Let's go back to the second level, the middle level here. Now, here what we can do, we can do a shrink wrap. Select the general shape there. Let's make a wrap project. Let's go on the Z-axis, negative, positive. Adapt the position if necessary so everybody is there. And now apply the modifier right away. Let's solidify at offset 1, thickness 1. Let's go to A and normals to the outside. All right. And let's adapt. Now, I think I won't use any bevel here because I want everybody to be very smooth like this. Let's go to level two or three. Okay, this is pretty nice. What we need is a bit more thickness, thickness 1.5. And now, edit mode A, and let's adapt to the design because, in fact, the middle is not that sharp, right? So let's work on the shape. The modeling of the tongue is done. So, kiss my pave, save, and be happy. All right, now, for the teeth, let me take the gemstones and bring them higher than the models. Two diamonds for one, one diamond for another, and one diamond for the other. Okay, so that's what must fit. From there, add mesh plane, move it higher than the other models. Let's call this teeth. Okay, let's go to edit. Now here, let's take just one vertex, extrude, extrude, extrude. So we're going to follow the tongue right there. Okay, and extrude, 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 and start closing your topology. F, 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 F. Mirror on the x-axis, control A, all transforms right there. Go back to edit mode. Now here, let me take this, shift D, X, and let's adapt this. Obviously this, this one is not that wide. Okay, top view, and now just let's take this one, L, shift D, and this one is sharp, a sharp key right there. Okay, so we have this. What we're going to do is solidify. Let's go on one and offset one. Right A, everybody outside or flip. It depends on your situation. Here, they went L and let's bring this guy a bit lower. Well, actually, let's take everything and start working the teeth into position. I actually might rotate them on the x-axis slightly. Obviously, maybe the thickness is a bit, maybe 1.5. And let's start working with the lips, the tongue, and everybody. Okay, so now when I was saying that the teeth are not flat is because they're not flat. We're going to start working with, okay, so obviously here, let's go up bevel. One level is good. Subdivision surface, level three. So it's pretty smooth. Okay, and let's keep working on these shapes. Right, I want to rotate this one on the y-axis and check the position because beware that you can't be higher than the lips. Now, the difference in the expression is the small metal edges that I was talking about earlier. Okay, so we are going to make these small edges before working on the pavé. Kiss my pavé, save and be happy. We're going to use busy curves, so add curve, busy. Okay, so we're going to edit the curve. Let's follow this edge of the lips, by example, here. Let's work 2D first, set the resolution 45. Okay, let's go and create a profile shape, add curve, busy circle. Let's edit this. Let's subdivide. Bring these to S, Y, 0. And let's bring this one a bit like a pyramid shape, something like this. We will check the size later. Let's call this Corners Profile. This busy curve, this is going to be an eclipse. Edges. So geometry, geometry, bevel object. 
Bevel the profile here, build caps, yes. Now scale, I said control A, but you need to go to A and mean radius to one. Okay, that's what happens in Blender when you scale busy curve. So you don't necessarily have to do the edges as just one busy curve. Okay, let's bring a mirror modifier. So control A location right there. Okay, let's do a merge at one, two, or whatever works for you. Now here, let's do this as a three vector. And let's extrude that here. And let's adapt the handles. Beware of the tilt. So A, we're going to mean the mean radius is going to be a bit smaller. Just a bit, 0.85, that's pretty nice. Now let's get rid of these. Okay, just one vertex here, please. Let's extrude, okay, grab, extrude this way. Extrude, extrude, yeah, that's pretty nice. So simply avoid this type of uh, twisting there. And okay, let's grab this one. So let's follow this edge. It's going to help with the expression of the tongue from below. Never forget to check from below. So here we can see that goes down a bit too much. And let's make it vanish in the solid. Like, okay, this is pretty nice. And we have the one in the middle right there. So it's only one. So make it shift D and remove the mirror. Let's go here, SX0 and 0 on global. And let's adapt the Z. So let's make it work right here in the middle of the tongue. Now all the tilt zero. Well, let's make an edge all around the ring. So yeah, basically with three vertices, you can do the entire edge. So that's the edge of the ring. And there's still another edge I want is the zone for the gemstone. So let me let me bring this to the side right here. Basically like that. Okay, you go there and then let's adjust the handle. Don't forget to look on the inside. We can see the points. So let's bring them out. All right, the edges are done. This is looking great. Turn the snap on face project, center, align rotation to target, effect move, and rotate. Now something, let's go see this. Edit mode A. Let's put the gemstone higher. So we're going to have some distance to the center. That's a better center for a pavé. Grab this and let's go to Alt D. The snap is turned on and the gemstone is not too low. Let's go with Alt D. We're going to fit four gemstones. And that's thanks to the fact that my gemstone is not too low. Now here, 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 let's go to mirror, object, link transfer, copy modifiers, and it's all on the Y. So let's make that based on the lips. And again, object, link transfer, data, copy modifiers. Now oh, don't forget the snap, you know, I'll see. And actually let's start making the prong already. So add mesh, UV sphere, let's go at 40, 20, shade, smooth, size, 0.8. Let's call this prong. 0.001, let's save, let's go to edit mode, type view, x-ray of A, beam, yeah, beware of the length, don't make it too long, that's not good or too short. Now also, don't forget, A, the center, here you can see the center, I want this one to go pretty high because the gemstones are going to be, okay, so let's test it, snap is on, alt D, and let's start the prong pavé, and let's have the mirror based on the lips, on the x-axis, okay, and let's start alt D, alt D, that's great in Blender how you can snap things. So we have this, but now we have a couple of gemstones up here that might fit. Let's take the prong now and let's start working. Like this. All right, so this pavé is complete. This is a very nice diamond pavé setting. We still need to make the cuts for gemstones. Let's take all these diamonds. Let's make a ship key. Let's make an Alt C. Now Control J. Okay, so we have all the diamonds as one mesh. Let's call that Petrus diamond. Let's grab the mesh of the teeth right there. So this needs a Boolean difference path solver right here. You can hide that to check the cuts. This is perfect. So here, same. Take this one and with Shift, select all the diamonds we have here. Shift D, click. Okay, here's something important. You know I made linked copies. So if I make Alt C to make it a mesh, we get a mess and not a mesh. Now, and do this, what we need to do here is the object relations, make single user object and data right there. Now you can make the Alt C and Control J and rename this cutters diamonds side. Okay, Boolean difference, path solver. Let's search cutters. These are cutter diamond sides. Here we go. Let's make a local view. Let's admire this perfect Boolean. Great. Now we'll proceed to the pavé of the rubies on the lips and on the tongue. 
Now, let's complete this work of art. Don't forget to adapt the center. So select everything. Let's move it there. Turn on the snap, Alt D, turn on the mirror on the X axis based on the cube center. And let's start. So let's grab this friend and let's. So that's why this is all faster than automatization and also This beats easily any automated software for many reasons, because it's slightly uneven, but at the same time, it's perfectly even. And this is gorgeous. So I know the design is very tacky, not very subtle, but it's a lot of fun. Honestly, this design is it's aesthetically quite interesting. It might not be of your taste, but you can take away that this design is technically very interesting to make in 3D in Blender, and it works very well. Okay, let's take the prong and let's start. So mirror based on cube center, and here we go. So let's do an hexagonal distribution. Let's start here in the middle. So also this looks very pretty. We also need an auto smooth right here. Do that on all the other meshes. And this is how you create a professional gemstone pavy setting in Blender. There are many things that still can be added to this design. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. As always, take care, be nice to the planet, be nice to animals, and see you soon.